how do I go about setting clear expectations for my leadership at all levels, including myself? One of the things that you've got to do is you've got to absolutely have role clarity. And what I mean by role clarity is I'm not just talking about the typical job description. What I'm talking about is a job description that, that has context, that has deep context. And what that looks like is, is this at a very high level is you've got to absolutely understand, you know, what is the responsibilities of the role? Like, what is it that we're supposed to do? That's the traditional job description of what that is. But then you need to go through and you need to say, you know, what are the musts? versus the wants of this position. And once again, you got to remove people's personalities and names. It's hard, and I've done this enough that I see where people say, they start putting people's names on it. Forget that, okay? Get absolute role clarity. So if you're trying to define your chief revenue officer's role, if you're trying to, you know, your, your, um, you know, your office manager or your chief people officer, whatever it may be, remove the name and get absolute clarity about what you need. So what are the must versus the wants? One year from now, one year from now, if this individual is wildly successful, like if they create the change or the growth or the development or the clarity that's needed, what would be in place? Like list those things out. You know, don't, don't worry about debating them and discussing them. Just list them out. What would be there one year from now? If they were wildly successful. So if that's it, what would be there in 90 days? What would be there in 90 days? So directionally, for instance, if I'm driving from Denver to San Diego, the goal of San Diego, in one year from now, I should be able to see the ocean, I see you know Coronado Bridge, whatever it might be. But 90 days, you know, if it's a driving scenario. You know, I may say, you know, I'm, I'm somewhere in Utah and what does that look like? You know, if all of a sudden I look up and I'm in Austin, Texas, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, I'm off route, right? So where am I at one year from now, 90 days from now? This is a very critical one that I want you to think about is how, how do we want this person to go about doing their job? How do we want them to do that? So for example, I had an organization where they were bringing in a head of product. It is an organization that their perception was that they had struggled because their product was not up to what it needed to be. When the interviewing process indirectly, because the executive team had not spent the time getting clarity about the expectations, they signaled to this candidate that they hired that, that this person was supposed to ride in on a white horse and save the day with their product knowledge and their product experience. Well, the reality of it was we caught it before it happened, but had this person come in with that kind of attitude, it would have alienated everybody. It was not an organization where you could come in and be a know-it-all and everybody was going to be happy you were there. Okay, so we had to talk about how do we expect them to come in. First, we had to have them understand nobody cares how much he knew until they knew how much he cared. He had to spend time getting to know the people and spend time understanding what their business issues are, what their business problems were. And then he could start overlaying his experience. So how matters? Oftentimes I see where organizations and you've heard the same before where people get hired for their skill and they get hired, fired for their behavior. This because this hasn't been well defined. The how is a critical part of a job responsibility that I rarely see get discussed. And the last part of it is, the last part of it is, is, you know, what are they accountable What are they accountable for? Oftentimes, the accountability is a, is a is a dirty word inside of organizations. But the reality of it is, is, is when we, there's three reasons people don't do something. They either don't know how, they can't, or they won't. And so we've got to be clear on which one of those things are, uh, which one of those things it is. And so we've got to be clear about what they're accountable for. So when things maybe don't go like as we expected, we're able to have that discussion. So when we have this discussion and this clarity, now we put a name back against it. And we're able to give the clarity that's needed in order to set expectations. There's nothing emotional about this. There's nothing that has not been vetted out in here that does not 
deliver and define what the expectations are. So the question was, how do I set clear expectations for leadership at all levels, including myself? First and foremost, you've got to start with the with the end in mind, where it is you want to go. Sometimes this takes two, three, sometimes four hours to define this, but don't do it in a vacuum. Do it with a team of people once again. We want to try to get everybody's fingerprints on the murder weapon. We want alignment. We don't want efficiency when it comes to setting expectations. You can do this. It doesn't cost you anything other than a little bit of time and a little bit of struggle. And I'm telling you, it's worth it because it'll get you to the top. And you can and you will do it. Thank you. I'm Kirk Dando. If you have a question for me or an issue or scenario that you want me to address or think about or share some of the you know best practices or tricks I've learned, Please put them in the comments below. If it's something confidential, please reach out to us at KirkDando.com and I'll share them on one of these videos. Have a great day.